it's a very important topic. You know, uh, my main emphasis uh, would be basically uh, hyperthyroidism and AF, which are, you know, very, very commonly coexisting conditions and how we go for it. We treat AF first or hyperthyroidism or both and which conditions uh, we start with anticoagulants also. So basically, uh, atrial fibrillation is, uh, you know, is a very common complication. Uh, we are, I think, missing it a lot. Uh, we have to be more conscious and, you know, uh, looking for it more oftenly. And it's, it's very common in hyperthyroidism in almost half of the patient. And uh, like overall, and uh, more than 65 years, it's 5% even as isolated and 10% in more than 80 years. Uh, in hyperthyroidism, what happens because of the, uh, the um, uh, you know, T3 and T4, there is an alteration in um, beta-1 adrenergic and M2 muscarinic uh, receptors, which are there in the cardiac muscles. And once there is, uh, you know, disruption or alteration, it leads to enhanced uh, sympathetic activity, as well as uh, there is, uh, you know, a short atrial refractory time. So more, uh, you know, beating of atria and which is erratic. Atrial fibrillation, uh, we all know, is an independent predictor of uh, chronic, you know, and future uh, morbidity and mortality. And it has got a negative impact on quality of life. It is associated with a lot of, you know, thromboembolism, cardiovascular and cerebrovascular mortality, especially in elderly population. So it's very crucial to uh, diagnose as well as to address this issue, especially if there's a hyperthyroidism, including subclinical hyperthyroidism, which again, I think, you know, we miss generally on test. We generally, you know, go for the te uh, patients who have frank symptoms of hyperthyroidism. So overall, other important point is that atrial fibrillation, it is not only a hyperthyroidism, uh, like even excess of alcohol intake, advancing age, as I told you, more than 65 years and more than 75 years, uh, this gender is, you know, again, uh, it, it varies from population to population. Then inflammation, sleep apnea, family history of AF, CBD, and other cardio, you know, echocardiographic abnormalities. So if patient has got hyperthyroidism and AF, it is not necessarily, it is because of hyperthyroidism. It may be because of other disorders. So that also point has to be understood. And overall, uh, hyperthyroidism is one, then heart failure, endocarditis, even respiratory problem, OSA, and thrombus in left atrium, all, uh, you know, especially is one of the cause uh, for atrial fibrillation, and then thromboembolism. Now, excess of thyroid hormones lead to uh, ionic currents in atrial myocyte, and that, you know, uh, leads to a decrease in atrial potential duration. It decreases atrial refractory time and there's more beating of atria. So overall, as I mentioned earlier also, there is an alteration in B1 and uh, B1 adrenergic and M2 muscarinic receptors which are present in the cardiac muscles. So uh, uh, hyperthyroidism, you know, leads to uh, uh, AF because of, you know, one is cardiac structure abnormalities, then iron channels, inflammation, then even, you know, grave disease directly, you know, because of the autoantibodies, uh, they can be atrial fibrillation. Even hypothyroidism sometimes may cause. Now, other important point is if patient has AF, we should also be looking for hyperthyroidism or other thyroid disorders because when patients with AF are given cardio, you know, uh, 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 amiodarone, then amiodarone over a long period of time can lead to thyroid dysfunction, which again we may, we may miss. So that is another important reason that when patient has got AF, so go for autoantibodies, go for other, you know, if patient has other autoimmune disorders. So it is like when we talk of cardiometabolic diseases, when we talk of NAFLD, we always say, find out even cardiovascular other risk factors. So similarly here, both are coexisting if one is there, try to find out for the other one. So basically, you know, in thyroid, you know, thyroid hormones, they, there is a sub, substrate uh, altered conduction. There is a, you know, triggering of ectopic, uh, you know, uh, say action potential uh, in uh, basically atria. 
and then also you know uh, say ras uh, stimulation is also there and leading to ultimately atrial fibrillation now auto antibodies like in graves disease i told you can also be sometime responsible for atrial fibrillation so that is another in especially in graves disease so that may be directly you know related to atrial fibrillation now this is to show that you know this is overall uh, cumulative uh, incidence of atrial fibrillation and this is you know basically how we you know decide on subclinical hypothyroidism when tsh is between 0.1 and 0.44 youth thyroid when it is between 0.45 and 4.5 and clinical hypothyroidism when it is more than 4.5 and less than 20 so that's how we decide for you know treatment so overall symptoms are non specific they are not really related to af they are in the form of dyspnea palpitation chest discomfort dizziness and exhaustion now the diagnosis is very simple uh, besides clinical features uh, you know a 12 lead ecg or a single lead ecg but more than 30 second of tracing and uh, you know uh, non discernible repeating p waves irregular uh, PR interval. I don't think you know we need to. This everybody knows. Now, how we decide, uh, you know, whether patient uh, is to be, you know, what treatment is to be given. So basically, the first and foremost thing is, if patient has a new onset of atrial fibrillation and patient is hemodynamic unstable, it needs an urgent cardioversion. So that one point is totally it should be clear. The second is. when patient has overt hyperthyroidism then and it is not an emergency then you make this patient as you thyroid by starting anti thyroid medication so this point is again has to be understood well and then obviously rate control treatment and rhythm control treatment we always given atrial fibrillation so those that goes as per the guidelines uh, we we already know now other is if patient is got a uh, you know uh, say uh, severe you know a subclinical uh, phase then again you know anti uh, uh, thyroid treatment is started and rhythm and uh, this you know rate control uh, treatment are also started now if af is within 48 hours the onset when patient comes to us then we should be starting you know straight away uh, basically the cardioversion is to be done whether it is pharmacological or electrical and after cardioversion then oral anticoagulant should be started within 3 weeks or immediately and should be continued 4 weeks later so this again and is an interesting point that when patient comes with af what to do now if patient is got youth thyroid then definitely you know then nothing to be done for uh, thyroid we treat af as per the guidelines as i told you you know chronic af or acute onset af now if atrial fibrillation now here we can see is there you know with hyperthyroidism and it is it is just you know basically mild when there is a mild uh, 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 say uh, hyperthyroidism subclinical then we may not be in a hurry to decide for anti thyroid medication then it will depend on other features if patient is elderly having other you know features then we will start otherwise you treat only af so that's how you know this is an important thing to be understood well by all of us now recommendations of af management uh, in subclinical you know so so basically the goals of treating atrial fibrillation remains the same it is only the thyroid you know which makes it little different and it has to be prevented for future complications in terms of thromboembolism leading to cardiovascular and especially cerebrovascular uh, accidents in terms of cvas and uh, you know uh, uh, say other neurological disorders and to alleviate the symptoms patient is also having symptoms that also should be you know uh, the treatment to be given to stop that so basically you know overall uh, management of af is based on 4s stroke risk symptom severity severity of af burden and substrate severity so all these four things are important it has to be individualized now subclinical uh, hyperthyroidism is a correctable cause uh, uh, of atrial uh, fibrillation and uh, you know target should be to you know make the patient in a youth thyroid state 
and prevent recurrent episodes of atrial fibrillation. Cardioversion of AF uh, if there is a persistent subclinical uh, hyperthyroidism. In case of if the symptoms are invalidating, then obviously rate control and rhythm control. Both are important. And for that, you know, generally we give beta blockers. I'll be discussing that. Uh, and anti arrhythmic agents. Uh, Holter monitoring uh, is generally, you know, uh, required to evaluate the recurrent AF if patient is symptomatic. Now, patients who have long duration of AF, long standing chronic AF, they are generally, you know, uh, likely to have persistent AF. And there, you know, uh, like uh, sometimes there's a spontaneous cardioversion, but most of the time we need a pharmacological or electrical uh, way of doing it. Now, beta blockers are one of the best medications for the rate control uh, and as well as for, you know, heart failure. We already know that. And uh, so they improve better, uh, you know, uh, quality of life uh, uh, is improved. And metoprolol, bisoprolol, carvedilol, and nebivilol are, you know, are, are equally important here. Uh, propranolol is a non-selective. So basically, uh, you know, for only for thyrotoxicosis symptoms, palpitations, then only otherwise all other specific conditions we need selective beta blockers. That's an important thing again uh, we have to. Now, what are the factors which favor uh, rhythm control treatment like young age, first episode, short history of AF, rate control target unachievable, tachycardia mediated cardiomyopathy, no or few comorbidities and atrial fibrillation uh, pre precipitated by acute illness. So, you know, kind of young patients, reversible causes generally, you know, are favorable. If patient is hemodynamically unstable, I think, you know, uh, that we do in all the cases, we need immediate uh, cardioversion, either with a pharmacological mean or, you know, with cardioversion, uh, electrical. Uh, then if AF uh, is within 48 hours, cardioversion without starting uh, anticoagulation, first and then uh, you know if patient is having uncertain onset uncertain then three weeks of uh, anticoagulation uh, you know uh, is required if if we don't know the duration of atrial fibrillation and uh, and other important thing is uh, te uh, echography uh, to exclude basically thrombus in atrium if we exclude then we can be a little liberal if there's a thrombus then it has to be urgent uh, anticoagulation and then correction of hyperthyroidism uh, is again very important and like we, we, we uh, have to get it less than uh, point, uh, 0.10. Now, amiodarone is very commonly given and we have seen many cases, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it is very common, but it is not that rare also that, uh, you know, especially uh, like the choice of amiodarone is only where there is a structural heart disease, not plain and simple at atrial fibrillation or when there's a left ventricular dystolic, uh, uh, diastolic, uh, systolic dysfunction. So here, you know, in the patients where we start amiodarone, do thyroid functions. It is always advisable, even otherwise, so that we know the baseline uh, thyroid, uh, you know, levels. And, and later on, we can come to know. And approximately 70 to 75 percent of these patients remain euthyroid. In 20 to 25, you know, 25 percent of the patients, we may, they may have symptoms of, of, you know, uh, say either, uh, say, hypothyroidism or hyper. It is, it is both. Now, management is withdrawal of the medication, we already know, and antithyroid treatment, and then uh, steroids, if sometimes required. Now, it is of two types, basically, this uh, amiodarone induced uh, thyroid dysfunction, type 1, when there's increased synthesis of T3 and T4 due to the excess of iodine, which is there with amiodarone. That's one. And type 2 is a destructive process, which is because of excess release of T3 and T4. So this is, you know, uh, I know the two different types of uh, hyperthyroidism with amiodarone. Rate control treatment, beta blockers are the best. If not, then calcium channel blockers and digoxin. For rhythm control, flaconide is important uh, with beta blocker. And other medications are propafenone and... Uh, uh, Varna, Kellent, and uh, Ibutilite. <coughs> so basically the guidelines, you know, we see, go by the, uh, uh, the level of evidence. B is uh, beta blockers recommended for rate control response. 
uh, evidence B and level of evidence B, circumstances where uh, beta blockers cannot be used, it's gel calcium channel blockers, non-dihydropyrimidine. And then oral anticoagulants, uh, you know, uh, once they're given, then uh, INR to be kept between uh, two to three. And uh, once we achieve euthyroid state, then antithyroid uh, thrombotic prophylaxis are the same as with hyperthyroid state. So basically, you know, uh, uh, anticoagulant treatment is uh, like, you know, uh, if youth thyroid state cannot be achieved, then decision of anticoagulation will depend on, this is the, you know, these two scores are very oftenly used by cardiologist, uh, CHAD2, DS2, and uh, West uh, C score and HES blood score. So you find out this score, this, you can use the net for this, and if it is high, then you start straight away, start with anticoagulation, and if the risk is low, when the score is zero to one, then if there is a persistent of subclinical hyperthyroidism is persisting with AF, then only you give, otherwise not. So that's how we go for anticoagulation. So these are, you know, basically the scoring system, and uh, uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, this is just to calculate the risk uh, for, uh, you know, uh, say thrombosis, and if it is high, then straight away we go for uh, anticoagulant. So choice of anticoagulant, uh, vitamin K uh, antagonist are preferred. And definitely PT, INR has to be done. Uh, no X are the first choice if patient can afford. They're relatively a little more costly. And initiation of oral uh, anticoagulation, as I told you, is three weeks prior to undertaking. If we are planning a cardioversion, three weeks prior and four weeks after cardioversion, anticoagulation should be given. So to conclude, I would say that atrial fibrillation is uh, quite a common problem, especially if there's a hyperthyroidism, maybe subclinical hyperthyroidism. We have to have a very high index of suspicion, a good proper you know, history, even minor symptoms, especially in elderly should not be neglected we can always go for a, you know, some small test like ECG and, uh, you know, if required, Holter monitoring to uh, prevent the morbidity and mortality in terms of thromboembolism leading to, you know, stroke and also heart failure. So cardiovascular assessment, uh, so first is clinical, then 12 uh, lead ECG and Holter monitoring. Prevention of stroke and heart failure events uh, with oral uh, anticoagulants is a priority uh, in these patients. And this is also going to improve their quality of life. Uh, so with this, I uh, conclude my talk and I convey my thanks to all of you.